Hello everyone. Uh, Genesis Senge. Oh wait, right, it rebranded. <clears throat> Alc P40 here. It's been a while since the last Engines of Metrolink episode, but on this edition, we are going to be discussing a rather awkward locomotive class. Today, I'll be discussing the Motive Power Incorporated MP36PH-3C. This is one of currently two active locomotive classes on Metrolink's roster, so expect this episode to be short. However, I think in order to discuss the MP36PH-3C, we need to trace back to the origins of the MP Express series. The story would start off with Metro needing engines to replace their weary F40Cs from the RTA. But since the AMD F59PHI was taken off the market in 2001, Metro was really in a pickle. That's when a different locomotive builder came up to them. Move Power Incorporated, formerly Morrison Nutson, proposed one engine that would use an entirely new design compared to rebuilding older engines before. That would soon lead up to what would become the MP36PH-3S. Metro would order 27 units, with all being built between 2003 and 2004. Shortly after Metro's order, Caltrain would need engines for their new Baby Bullet service. MPI won the contract for that, and another variant of the MP Express called the MP36PH-3C would be built. Caltrain would not be the only one to order this model, as more railroads would follow suit such as Railrunner in 2005, West Coast Express in 2006, and Frontrunner in 2007. Metrolink needing more motor power followed suit in 2008, ordering 15 units numbered 888 to 902. All these units were built between 2008 and 2009. The units came with a top speed of 102 miles per hour and had an EMV 645F3B engine producing 3600 horsepower. The 645F3B brought mechanical issues with the engine, and they were usually towed by other engines for that fact. Under technical specifications, the MP stood for motor power, 36 denoting the 3600 horsepower, P standing for passenger, H standing for the unit coming with head and power, or HGP, V standing for the computerized control systems, and C standing for having Caterpillar or Cummins Genset HGP inverters, compared to Metro static inverters on the MP36PH-3S's. The units came in at 293,500 pounds, had a good ratio of 60 to 17, have a length of 70 feet, a width of 10 feet 7.5 inches, and a height of 15 feet 6 inches. The MP36s at Metrolink had purely old cast Nathan P2s. Here's a few samples. With the units working around with faulty engines, you'd expect a breakdown here and there. Well, in 2015, 893 did have a major breakdown and would end up, end up being retired from it. No MP36s on Metrolink have been in wrecks yet, but their retirement could be on the horizon. In Metrolink's rail fleet management plan, between 2025 and 2030, Metrolink has the choice of overhauling the MP36s to tier 4 emission standards to make them last to at least the 2040s or to replace them with an entirely new locomotive. Metrolink's decision might be critical for the fleet. Will they revamp engines that cost 616 delays between 2017 and 2021? Or will they look for a more reliable engine that doesn't use the same engine as an SD50? No matter their decision, the MP36PH-3C might be a rocky design, but when they work, they do it right. They always will be, and still are, in the history book of Metrolink, the Southern California Regional Rail Authority. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy this Engines of Metrolink episode. I mean, it's been a while since I released the last one. Thank you for PenzyFan19 for saving my ass on trying to look for a new locomotive. He basically reskinned the Charger. And, well, I'll link a link in the description for his channel, I guess. I mean, I've shouted him out before. Why can't I do it again? Anyways, I'll see you next time when I discuss the final major engine in Metrolink's roster, the EMD F125. Stay tuned and thank you again for watching. There are you Metrolink fummers happy now!